Hello everyone, welcome to our Tuesday Sew Along. Um, today, we uh, Tony's been working on putting together all of the rows around the center of the block from the Duck Duck Goose quilt. So I thought I would show you how far we've gotten. I put together some rows, she put together some rows, and she's been putting the um, extra uh, piece or, uh, spacer borders around it. The, and it's actually hanging up there sideways. So she's got the top and bottom uh, turkey tracks borders on. And then I pinned up the, um, oh my goodness, I forgot what I named it. The, it's geese gaggle. That was what I named it. See, I should write these things down because I forget what I call things. So I've got the gaggle border pinned up right behind Tony. Um, you can see it over on the edge. But before that border, there's another um, little border of black all the way around and red on the side, or uh, red all the way around, and then another little border of black before the gaggle border. So I'm real pleased with how it's turning out. I like the, it looks kind of cozy and um, comfortable. So that was where our uh, shop block ended up with the um, duck duck goose project. So today is an overview of where we're going next. Um, and I have some things to share with you. I'm going to show you the fabric pull that I'm using. And then I've got um, some samples of fabric pulls that Tony and I have put together just to kind of share with you so you can see where we're headed. Now, most of you, if you've been following me for very long, know that um, most of my um, video sew-alongs are um, demonstrations of Studio 180 design tools. And as uh, you probably know, we carry all the tools, all the patterns, all the technique sheets, um, and I'm a certified instructor for Studio 180 design. So I do like to use the Studio 180 design tools for the precision that they offer. So I decided there's a whole series of blocks called Blockbuster blocks that the Studio 180 design team has put together. Some of them we've used before. There is a, a series of uh, sew alongs that I did about a year and a half ago called Blockbuster Sampler. And I used the first 15 blocks. And I made them in several different sizes and designed a quilt around that. But I decided to, to change all the blocks uh, or to demonstrate all the blocks in a 12 inch format. Now, as we go through, you're going to see that some blocks I can't use because it's not possible to make them in a 12 inch format. Um, and we'll talk about that as we get to that. So there's actually 73 blocks in the series right now. I'm only using the uh, fundamental tools. Uh, or most of the fundamental tools. I decided not to use the um, Hunter Star or the um, Lemoyne Star, the Star 60, or the Wedge Star. Those specialty star tools I do teach. Um, I offer those in assorted classes. So I decided not to use them in our Blockbuster Bash. That's what I'm calling this one. So in the Blockbuster Bash, there's about 55 blocks over the course that we'll be doing. I don't know that I'll do all of them, but I have been through all of them and figured out what I need to cut to make 12 inch blocks. Um, and so that is a possibility. So before we get more into that, I want to um, share with you just as a reminder, classes we have coming up. So the first class that we have coming up is the um, Morning Star Quilt. That's the one on the left up in the picture. That uses uh, the wedge star tool, and it is a really cool tool. Now, those are 12-inch blocks um, in that quilt. I actually did make it in 3-inch blocks as well. There's my 3-inch blocks. So um, it's a fun one, and it's actually hanging on the wall behind me. When you see my face, usually you can see just the edge of that. So that is called Morning Star Wedge Star is the tool you need, and um, we still have spaces for that, uh, and it is Saturday, September 17th. The one in the middle is the Give It a Whirl. That one actually uses 
um, the Studio 180 Design Lemoyne Star Tool, as well as the Wing Clipper Tool. And that one is Wednesday, September 21st. That one has openings um, as well, too. Then on Saturday, um, September 24th, we're going to do the uh, Charmed Hearts again. Charmed Hearts uses the Tucker Trimmer, um, and it is just a simple quilt made with charm squares, and it makes kind of a crib size. You could make it in a table topper or a table runner, or you could even make more blocks and have a bigger quilt. So all of those projects, all of those classes are listed on our website. You can purchase the class from the website or you can call us to sign up. You have the option of coming in person to take the class or you can take the class via Zoom. And I run them at the same time. Um, we had a class last week and we had one lady from Arizona taking it at the same time. We had some people here in the shop taking it and the lady that was on Zoom said it was a great format. She uh, got a lot out of the class and she was happy with being able to take the class via Zoom from home um, since she's not a local person. So we were glad she was able to take that. So there's the three inch Morning Star blocks. It's um, a matter of strategic color placement and um, using the Wedge Star tool to make those three inch blocks. So the first block that we're going to do is actually the block behind me on the wall. And we'll be working on that next week. Um, and we'll talk more about that. So I wanted to share with you, first of all, um, just a little bit about the um, Blockbuster blocks. They're a free download from the Studio 180 Design website. And on your handout, I'll be including a link um, and a, um, a, a link for you to go to the website and download those uh, patterns. You can actually go ahead of time and download them if you want to, um, and or download five of them or ten of them at a time. So um, let me talk a little bit about what fabric I've pulled and some suggestions that Tony and I have played with today so that um, you can kind of think about what you might want. Now, that being said, um, I said earlier, there are actually 55 blocks that I have to pick from. And um, so if you were going to make all 55 blocks in a 12 inch format, that would give you enough blocks for a queen or king size quilt easily. If you want to make just half of them and you had an alternating block, that would also give you enough for a king or queen size quilt. So I have got a... Um, chart here I was playing with just different arrangements of blocks so just with simple sashing you could make it 108 by 122 which would be a good solid California king um, and you could also put it on point so I put a couple of on point options just for you to look at and think about you could do just six of the blocks um, and just watch the rest pick your favorites and do those and then in the middle, right there in the middle of the screen, I put an alternating chain block just so you could see what that might look like if you just did a few blocks of um, the blocks that we're going to be demonstrating and then picked an alternating block to put in between them. So it creates a really cool look. And then I just put simple borders around it just for um, a, an example of what you could do once you get the blocks. Now I will tell you, the blocks I'm going to be demonstrating with and making are actually going to go to our local guild. So the Dogwood Quilt Guild, which meets here in Solemn Springs, do uh, Quilts of Valor and Quilts of Honor. And they um, have a lot of people who like to make the quilts. They like to quilt the quilts, but they don't necessarily want to make the blocks. So I am making blocks and what I have when I get finished, I'll hand them a, a batch of blocks. I may not hand them all of them because I could... Uh, put together 12 of them and make a, a nice um, quilt of valor all myself. So you have the option of doing that. So my fabric that I pulled is a series of um, red, white, and blue fabrics and even some gold thrown in. So just to kind of give you an idea of what I did, let me flip this around here so you can see it. This is my... Um, a sample of some of the ones I picked. 
So I've got some reds, some blues, some golds, assorted ones, because I like to do scrapping. But of course, I could just get yardage, some white, some red, some blue, some gold, and just save that to put in my blocks. So that's an option for you to do red, white, and blue. Um, I was playing with those uh, layouts. Let me rewind just a little bit and talk about those layouts. If you decided you were going to do um, the big project with basically all of the blocks, um, that 108 by 112 inch version, you're probably going to need about 40 fat quarters if you're using Scrappy and doing um, fat quarters or an equivalent of about 10 yards of fabric. That's the blocks. That doesn't include the sashing, the setting stones, or the borders. So that just kind of gives you an idea. If you're going to make all of them, um, you can play with those. Now, of course, you could make um, several of the smaller versions down in the bottom left corner. The 52 by 66 version is just 12 blocks. So you have the option of making um, several of those quilts and so you wouldn't have to have as many fat quarters to be able to do that. So that is um, also an option. So Tony and I picked a bunch of different options for you to look at. So this one is our batik version. And I like to pick a focus fabric and some coordinates. So this was one of the ones Tony grabbed. And um, so it's got a lot of purple. It's got a lot of turquoise and, of course, that um, snazzy black. And then you'll want something that'll play the part of a background. Um, so that is one option. Then this one is an Aboriginal um, import, and it's got some fun colors. So I pulled some fabrics from that as my color recipe. I picked gray to be the background. This is actually kind of a minty green that matches one of the colors that's in the print. And it's got some navy, some a kind of an electric blue and some green and some rose. And it's even got kind of a almost a peachy color. So any of those would work and look nice. So I often use um, a... Um, a piece that is, I'm hoping I'm still on there because I'm not seeing my picture. Is it still playing? Okay, so I'm just going to leave it alone and just keep talking and hopefully it is recording. So um, what I was going to say, I like to use a focus fabric as my color recipe. I don't always do that because like on my uh, red, white, and blue version, I didn't really have a focus fabric. I'm just going to be making a bunch of red, white, and blue blocks, and they'll go together nicely. Um, another option is you can use some layer cakes because many of the blocks you could make with a couple of 10-inch squares and a background. So this is a CAFE layer cake with lots of bold, um, fun colors, and that's an option. This is a fat quarter stack of black and whites. So you want some lights, darks, mediums, and then I put um, just a turquoise with it just for um, a little snap of color. This is, if you like, the animal look. I've got several animal prints and a cream in there to um, add to that. If you had a big, uh, a big print, that would be a good option as well. Or maybe even throw in some jungle ferns and that sort of thing it is almost fall and so you could do a seasonal version so i've got a the seasonal fall little print we even picked a christmas version so there's a couple of pieces in here that could play the part of the focus fabric and then some fabrics just to coordinate to go with it to make a fun little piece and then just a tone on tone for the background. Is it still showing? Yeah. I must have hit something on the computer. I mean, it, 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 I'm just going to hit that. Okay. Well, we're just going to assume that it's working. So this is a fat quarter group. Um, and we found a focus print. 
So you don't have to start with the focus print. We started with the fat quarter group and then found a, a fabric we liked with it. So that is um, kind of the warm tones. The same company, this is the P&B um, Tone on Tone Fat Quarters and this wild turtle print. Tony says it's not wild. It's just fun and um, watery. So that one would be an option as well. Now, often I'll choose a focus fabric to pick my colors, and then I'll pick all my colors and get rid of the focus fabric and not even use it. Sometimes that gives us a color recipe to, to work with um, if you're a little overwhelmed going to the shelf and picking from all the different colors. Sometimes if you kind of narrow it down to something that you like the combination of, and then you can put that together with um, just fat quarters of tone on tones. And of course, I could have picked all these colors off of our fat quarter um, drawers. I just happened to have it already in a stack, which made it kind of handy. So that kind of gives you some options of how you could choose fabrics to put together for the project. So I want to show you something that we'll talk a little bit more about next week when we're actually, there it is. <laughs> I'm having a terrible time with my mouse. It keeps closing things I didn't intend to close. <laughs> so um, I have the Ohio Star version, which is going to be our first block, uh, the Ohio Star variation, and we're going to do it in a 12-inch block. So a couple of things I wanted to show you about the Blockbuster patterns. First of all, you, it's a free download. You can go to the Studio 180 Design website and click on the downloads and you can find all of the Blockbuster patterns. Um, so you are welcome to download any and all of them. And like I said, I'm not gonna use all of them, but it's going to give you a couple of things um, to think about. Some of them will have an indicator of difficulty. That, this one doesn't really have that. It uses the Tucker Trimmer, and it gives me different size options. We'll talk more about that next week. And when um, I demonstrate, I will show you exactly what fabric you need to make the block that's on the wall behind me. So that is something um, that we'll be doing. So one reason I wanted to show you why we are not... Closed that. We're going to see if I can make this work because it's not, it doesn't have everything up here it's supposed to have. Um, I wanted to show you why we're not going to do all of the blocks. So if you're making um, blocks and putting together quilt blocks, sometimes you find a block and it just doesn't work very well. I have this open and now I'm trying to find it. Okay, um, some of the blocks are a, um, I'm going to call it a three grid. Some are a four grid, like think four patches and um, nine patches. And so I'm going to share my screen with you. There it is. Okay, so I have um, designed uh, this and put it here so we can kind of talk about it so that it makes a little more sense um, when it's time to put together blocks. But notice that the one on the left is a nine, nine patch block. It's a three grid, three squares by three squares. Now, of course, you don't have to have just a solid square. I could actually divide that square and put it into a um, six grid and it would work. And I could put different pieces within that, uh, those units. But it's built so that I can have three um, units by three units. Some blocks, I could trade it. Let's just take away the nine grid and put a two grid there. So it's two by two. That also, I could divide the, the block up and it, it's easily divisible. If I'm doing a um, nine inch or 12 inch block, 
I can divide that into three. I can divide that into four, like this one. I could divide that one into um, a 16 patch where it's four by four. But look what happens if I try to put a five by five grid there. It doesn't exactly work. Get that on top. So it has uneven um, units. So any of the blocks in the Blockbuster series that are a five grid, they're, you can't really easily divide uh, five into 12. So we're not going to be doing the, the five grid blocks. Um, so we'll talk about that as we get to them. If there's a block that you come to, um, and you download it and then you see that I didn't do that, I'll tell you why. Some of them are because they have used one of the specialty star tools and some of them are will be because they're a five grid block, which would work great if I'm making 10 inch blocks or five inch blocks, not so great if I'm trying to make a 12 inch block. It's doable um, with templates, I just don't want to use templates. That's why I like to use the Studio 180 design tools. So, um, until next week, kind of think about what fabric you might want to pick and give us a holler if you need help. Remember, we're always available. I do have a couple of handouts that I'll be putting on um, in Google Docs, just kind of an overview for you to think about at the page with the different um, alternate setting options and some information about what, how much fabric you might want to collect. And you can also just start like my 12 inch blocks of red, white, and blue. I don't necessarily have all the fabrics yet that I'll be using because since it's um, a, a specific theme of red, white, and blue, I don't have to have the same red, white, and blue throughout the whole project. So, uh, because I'm gonna do kind of a scrappy red, white, and blue. So until next week, happy sewing. Um, give us a call and be sure and call to sign up for a class if you want to uh, join us here at the shop or on Zoom. And we'll see you next week live at five. Bye-bye.